You all got your email. He may There's Barb is here on time. Hi, Barb. Hello. Hi, everybody. It's 1.30, so we'll, we'll wait. We'll go ahead and get started. We're waiting for another member or two uh, for the PDEC committee, but we have quorum here. We have uh, myself, uh, Greg Mezzi, and Deborah Dawson, and our new uh, pet cat for the legislature. So thank you for the Office for the Aging for that. And uh, so do we have any public comment? No public comment, okay. Any changes to the agenda that anybody wants to make? Okay. And so why don't we go ahead with minutes approval? Would someone like to move them from the last meeting? Greg moves, Deborah seconds. Any discussion? Corrections. Okay, well, thanks for doing the minutes, everybody. Uh, so I'm a yes, or, oh, sorry, let's go ahead and vote for minutes. Uh, Okay, that's unanimous. Uh, Randy, we're voting for the minutes from last. Okay, that's unanimous with Randy also, thank you. And we have advisory board appointments to the Strategic Tourism Planning Board. We have David Harker, the Ithaca College representative and to the Water Resources Council, Sean Bossard, the agricultural representative. Would someone like to move those two? Moved by Greg, seconded by Deborah. All those in, any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Moving right along. I don't, uh, for the, well, for the chair's report, the only thing that I wanted to say is um, we have a meeting, and I guess I could ask uh, Brittany and Taylor later, in our December meeting, which is coming up uh, in a few months. Uh, it, so I wanted to change that till earlier in the month because it's right between the holidays at the end of the month. Is that something we should look at later or talk about now, oh, I could Brittany? Okay. We could see if we could get a proposed time that we could meet. So if everybody can get your calendars out real quick and then maybe we can get this taken care of. It's scheduled for the day after Christmas. So we can definitely move that. Okay. Do you want us to work on that now or, or do later? Uh, if you if you want to now, that's totally fine. Yep. Okay. Do you do you have a time like the week before that would work? Um, do we want to keep it on that mon on a Monday? The twelfth is kind of early. Is that oh. a second Monday? That's going to be a problem because of BCP. Yep. Budget meets on the twelfth. Um, HHS meets on the nineteenth at three. Um, but if you guys, if you want, if this committee wanted to meet at one on the 19th, we could do one to th three or 1230. Give you all time to it should. How about noon? I thought you do. guys needed like at least half an hour. That's what we prefer. Yeah, we could do noon if that's yeah, well, noon that day. Noon. Can we do noon on the 19th? Will that work for most folks here? How about folks on, on Zoom, on remote? Okay, so the 19th at noon. So that's the 19th of December. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. And let's see. County Administrator's Report is next. Hi, Lisa. Do you have anything for us today? Um, just very brief, uh, you're all seeing a lot of me, we're seeing a lot of each other in the expanded budget committee meetings, so I think um, you you pretty much know uh, how I'm spending a lot of my time and our staff, we're doing a lot of um, follow up right now on uh, budget items and that seems to be going well. And uh, again, just to reiterate that we're in the final stages of the search process for both 
Chief Equity Diversity Officer and Deputy County Administrator. We've been fortunate to have excellent candidates and hopefully be, we'll be able to share some more information with you very soon on those. That's it for me. Okay, great, thank you. Any questions for Lisa? Great, thanks. thank you for the report. Thank you. And next we're moving right on to recycling and materials management. And we have Barb Ekstrom here today. Hi, Barb, Hi. how are you? I'm doing well, um, thank you. Um, yeah, so we just have a couple quick items. Um, the first is a resolution that I worked with Rick Snyder on. He will be sorely missed <laughs> when he retires. Um, but what this is about is we've, we realize there's a gap in the spending we're doing this year on capital projects with what was originally um, approved. So Rick wants us to um, establish uh, that the remaining $120,000 that's estimated through the year will come out of our fund balance, which I had explained was quite, quite significant. And uh, the proper funds are all established here. And what basically this is, is we're winding down with the paving and we are also um, gearing up with some work for the item I'm gonna talk about later with the um, uh, scales. So it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Okay, well, I'm going to have uh, uh, have somebody move the resolution on packet page 11. That's a budget adjustment establishing fund resources for the recycling and solid waste center site improvements. Randy, did I see your hand go up? Or okay, I, uh, I I thought I did. Okay, Deborah seconds that. Thank okay. you. Any more that you wanted to say about this, Barb? I don't think so. Okay, any questions for Barb on this or any discussion? Deborah? Yeah, I just wanted to be sure that I understood. So this is an interfund transfer out of a fund balance that's specifically reserved for capital improvements. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Okay, why don't we go ahead and vote and... Um, Let's see, so Henry's now on, on Zoom, so we'll do a roll call vote. Deborah? Yes. Henry? We'll come back to Henry. Randy? Yes. Greg? Yes. And I'm a yes. Uh, Henry, are you there? Okay, so uh, that passes. And let's see, we'll... And then also, Barb, you have a capital payment summary, and that's on packet page 13. Yes, I do. That's related. Uh, these are bills connected with the paving and striping project at the recycling center, which is virtually complete. These are bills for Barton LeJudas to assist in the oversight of that work. Um, I'm sure that you might have noticed that it's it's a good, it, it was a good job. We, we really are successful with, uh, with the work that was done. Uh, minimal change orders, less than 2%. So I wanted to get your approval for these bills today. Sure, and can you re remind us of the, of the scope? Uh, yes, it's for the paving, the engineering work associated with the oversight of the paving at the recycling center. I noticed last time I was there, it was just after uh, a rain, and not only is just the, the paving itself in so much better condition, but the drainage seems to That's be- That's correct. There was a, a chunk of drainage that was done as well, long overdue. What? Yes. What was the total cost to that project? It was about $485,000. And you only had a 2% overrun. That's impressive, Barb. Well, paving, it should be pretty straightforward, so. It should be, but we're not living in straightforward times. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, and I mean, the contractor, Vitali was very good and the oversight was good. And I have to tell you that Leo has 
We had much more of our own staff overseeing the project um, this time around, which saved us money. And Leo's quite quite confident at this this work with contractors. He has a way of working things out with them. <laughs> That's good. Yes, thank you. Great. Anything else on the capital payment summary? Uh, no. Okay, great, Barb. And now uh, we have down that there's a report discussion on yeah. the scale replacement. Yeah, quick update. Um, uh, just a couple of bullets here that are important to know. Um, uh, when we had our inspection over the summer by our Department of Weights and Measures, um, we were in a position where there appeared to be some structural damage to the to to the outbound scale, and um, then it was further investigated by our structural engineers from Barton and LeJudis, who actually had to hire somebody to go in safely in that tight airspace. And um, indeed, uh, we you know our department was right on the money. There was structural damage in the middle, but there was also um, less severe structural damage on the, the two outside cells. And um, so we did have an engineering evaluation done and we developed a cost estimate for what would be involved. I worked with purchasing and with our county administrator to receive authorization under emergency procedures. We had to shut the scale down as you might've heard. Um, I kudos to our scale operators who really did a fine job this summer in the busiest time getting people through with one scale, but we can't live with one scale. And so where we're at now is we are finalizing the design um, from the scope that was developed and um, that's being that's going to be finished next week. And uh, we will be uh, getting a quote from the current scale system company. If we find that that's above the engineer's estimate, we'll get another quote and we should know within a few weeks, um, you know, we should be able to, to award a bid, uh, well, a, a contract, sorry, not a bid, a contract and get the repairs going um, to that uh, outbound scale, the pit, the curbing, the sill, the electric power, will be all done and um, the, uh, yeah, that that's, and like we're gonna deal with the electric problems we've had with this, you know, with the sump pump. All in all, um, I'm expecting, others are more optimistic, but I'm expecting that everything will be completed by the end of January and the scale will be certified and back running. The total cost, for the construction repair replacement is estimated at $258,750, so roughly $260,000. Um, the engineering is, we approved a scope for $12,000, which will come out of the 120 that we earlier approved. Um, and quite frankly, everybody has been a great team. Um, to work with. And again, this is why we have a Department of Weights and Measures. And Aaron, Aaron uh, took his job seriously and we all work together as a team. The money that will um, uh, be used for this is going to be taken out of our funds. Uh, we will have to reallocate some money into the future, um, but we are gonna finish that off in October once we know the exact amount. But all in all, uh, I'm pretty pleased with how the process has gone so far, um, working as a county and working with, with the others. So that is the story here. Great, thanks for filling us in on that. Are there any questions about the work? Yes, Randy has one. Is, sure, Randy. is the other scale of similar age or? Well, it is, but it didn't have some of the water problems. However, you bring up a very good question. And we did look at the integrity of the scale, of that scale, and it's fine right now, but we're going to be putting in our capital budget next year 
for the future to be uh, also replacing that within, you know, within the five-year period. So um, all in all, yep, that's what's going to happen. Thanks. You bet. I had one more thing I wanted to make mention of unrelated to the scales, but related to the recycling center project. Um, I received a request through the ledge office um, to get for us to give a presentation about the recycling center, the contract and the status of, of the capital budget from Mike Lane, who wanted to have us give a presentation in October to his committee. And I wanted to just um, mention that because I, I talked to Lisa briefly, I served this committee and I didn't know how you wanted to handle this because we would be, um, if we were to come to your meeting with a presentation, perhaps F and I could be invited or what do you, what do you, what do you want here? Uh, that sounds appropriate to me. Uh, the way that you just described it is that you do the presentation here for that okay. invite. Uh, folks for F and I, but I'll I'll defer to uh, Lisa Holmes. Uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that we don't need to do the same presentation to two committees. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Especially in the times where things are recorded, where somebody could watch it later, even if they. they oh, could, good point. Um, so, uh, Lisa, what do you think? So, <clears throat> are we talking strictly a, um, a, a an update on capital? And we we discussed this briefly the other night, Barb. If it's if it's I think Mike a wants a lot more than that. And that's why I bring it back here because um, he wants an update about the expenses, the revenues, you know, the contract and the details, which we did give last year. Remember, we approved the contract in late 2021. And um, Leo Riley, my deputy, would be giving that presentation again. I would back him up. But um, their meeting is kind of soon. It's the middle of October. This committee would meet at the end of October. And um, we're, you know, we're just giving the capital um, update tonight. Uh, Leo will be there for that. I won't be there because it's a Jewish holiday. So he's going to do that. But um, yeah, I just wanted it to go smoothly and to make sure that this committee gets information um, that might be important. Okay. Okay. I, I can circle back. Certainly, um, you know, I know other departments have, who don't report to F and I have gone there to give updates on capital projects, but if you're. He wants more than that project, though. Okay. He wants, he wants the operating contract, um, you know, the, the yeah. deal basically. Okay. You know, the right. expenses and what, you know, what the functions are and all of that. Okay, sure. That's a little different. Yeah. And and I believe, you know, one of the other things I wanted to mention is the capital is, I'm assuming that when there's a capital meeting tonight, those PAR forms are already available to all the legislators. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. It's part all of right. the, budget, the budget book. All right. So you want to you wanna just let us know how you want to handle that? Sure. Okay. Okay, great. So it looks like uh, Lisa's going to help us follow up on that. Sure. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for um, bringing that up. I just have one more minute, okay? okay. Um, and that is that I have I have two announcements. One, okay. Before you go on to that, let me just see if does. Sure. Uh, sorry. Because <laughs> I had one question on this. Okay. On the I'm so sorry. Yep. No worries. Um, so is is that the scale when you come in to? What, what, it's the outbound scale when you leave. Oh, the outbound scale. Okay. And there's another scale? Yeah, an inbound scale. So you weigh in, right. dump your so stuff, when, when and you then go, you weigh out. It's for the non-residential traffic primarily. So, so but, right now people have to go you have back to, go to back out the, in, the indoor. Scale. Go in, yeah, they've so been, have to go they've out been, through the indoor. That's right. Okay. Um, it's almost um, a Led Zeppelin album, but okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, are. it's been working out amazingly well. People have been so good to work with, and we do keep them moving. So okay, we've had correct. limited complaints, but you know, once once we're all set, we know exactly what's going on. We'll do some public educate public information about what to expect, so people feel relieved. Okay, great. Any other questions on the scale? 
issues. Okay. And what else did you want to talk to us? Okay. About? So we are now a full, fully staffed organization after quite some time. Um, we have uh, a promotion to, we have four waste reduction and recycling coordinators, which uh, we haven't added new staff, but we have, everyone is in a position now. Um, our former communications coordinator who you knew um, as Jeremy Betterly is now going to be a waste reduction and recycling coordinator is in that position. And he's going to be doing work with all of the food scrap programs, the, the ones we have existing, we have some new ones planned, and all that goes with that is a big program. The organics management has grown quite a bit, as I mentioned. Um, we have another position that I've been trying to pitch hit for and doing my job, and it's been really, really tough. Um, it's our waste reduction and re, well, waste reduction, reuse, environmental product procurement, uh, product stewardship, and, and the, you know, solid waste plant, so many things. That position is filled. And we are so fortunate to welcome Kat McCarthy back, who worked with us for 10 years and then was away for seven. And she is just so skilled and such leadership. She did some wonderful work with the nonprofit called Center for Eco-Technology and is bringing some talents back to us. So we've had her for a few weeks now and we're very excited to bring in Sarah Nickerson who is now our, um, you met, you saw her at the, at the uh, budget meeting. Sarah is yeah. now our communications coordinator. She it comes from a number of outreach coordinator positions locally from Sustainable Tompkins, the Learning Web, um, different, different other organizations. And she's extremely talented. She's been to a number of outreach events already. She engages with people in such a beautiful way. And we're going to be growing a lot of our education. Randy, you had talked about school education. I'm happy to report we're revitalizing that program. And actually, if you would be okay with it, we would like to have um, a, meet, a meet and greet with you and begin to talk about how we can really move forward with our work plan for next year. So that's that's my news. Um, I do have another piece of news, which is I have decided to retire at the end of next March. Um, it is not official yet. I have not met with retirement. And I have brought it up with Lisa. We have six months starting next week. And my plate is going to be very, very full to help with um, succession planning and organization. But I will tell you that I still love what I'm doing. I'm still very, very committed. You're not going to see me falling by the wayside because I am grateful for the many years that I have enjoyed working at the county and I have a great staff and this is the best legislature and I'm not just saying that, that we've ever worked with because you're so receptive to the kinds of programs that we do. So I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. It's not formal, it'll be formal in November, but that's what Lisa and I are starting to talk about. We are gonna redo some job descriptions for the director and deputy director that are, mine is 22 years old. There's barely the mention of recycling in there. I'm still busy chasing rats at an old landfill. So rest assured <laughs> that we will, we will get it together. And I feel very, very supported. And my staff is very aware of what's down the pike here. Well, Barb, all uh, what comes to mind is all good things yeah. must come to an end. And no, no, no. I mean, we will keep going. <laughs> as far as your leadership. I know. I know. And uh, it's bringing tears to some of our eyes. No, no. And we, we, and, and I promise you, up. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to turn the corner and, and not answer questions from Lisa and from the folks here. It doesn't work that way. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, when, I mean, I have plans, but I'm not going to take another job. It's going to be volunteer work for me. 
maybe we have some uh, advisory boards <laughs> yeah, with, right. uh, who have know. interest. Hard to yeah. do that from Colorado. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. I'm going to be living in two locations at some point, but honestly, yeah. I really mean it. And I, I will I will tell you more later, but this legislature is, is the best. I mean, and the combination of what you have going with your leadership at the county and the ledge is just perfect. So it's it's very sad. But I did turn 65. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Lisa, okay. can we talk her into staying just a couple more years? I've, I've tried my best. <laughs> no, I, I mean, 62, I was thinking about it. Um, but, there were, you know, I mean, I'm going to leave. Uh, things are going to be in really good hands with Lisa and I. And of course, you know, it, there's there's a lot of opportunity and it there's a lot of possibilities with succession planning, I have to say. And it's gonna be Lisa's choice in the end, but I'm sure that she'll tap into my thoughts. And I concur, we have a really good administration right now and my fellow colleagues, you know, are just really a pleasure to work with and, and are supportive and a lot of the things that are important to you and, and to me and, and to the community. So we're really, I think, also in a good place right now. I really think staying in PDEQ is, would be lovely because this has been a really good situation to help us grow our reduction programs. Yes, it seems like that, you know, over the years, like you said, even the difference in the 22 years of the job description of things have changed and the focus of the department has changed. Anything else, uh, any other comments or questions for, for Barb before she's done? I just, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank her for developing and running what is one of the premier recycling programs in the state of New York. And that's a lot more to entirely on. on you, Barb. Guess what though? We're gonna be working with a, a, another solid waste plan. We're drafting a plan it's in the works. Um, hopefully by the end of the year, early next year, it's going to come to this committee and the and the, and the ledge and the public. And I'm going to see that through the best I can. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Have Thanks, Barb. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. Have a good rest of your week if we Thank don't see you. you. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we on. Peck at page 15, we have a, a resolution, and uh, this is a resolution to support the Clean Water, Clean Air, Clean Jobs, Environmental Bond Act of 2022. Would somebody like to move that? Deborah, seconded by Greg. And uh, so I asked for this to be added to the agenda. This, and actually was asked, uh, through some folks through NYSEC, the New York State Association for Counties. And they're asking counties to come and, uh, or, to, or to step forward and, and support this. And so as there's some supporting documents in here, but I'll just, just touch on a couple of the things that it says in the resolution, that this is to help provide clean drinking water, to protect our rivers, bays, lakes, streams, and waterfronts from pollution and it's modern, helping to modernize some of the water infrastructure, which we know is sorely needed across the state. It uh, is going to help upgrade transportation and stormwater infrastructure, restoring natural resources, growing urban forest, building green roofs, and upgrading cooling centers that will help reduce the impact of extreme weather. It will also help restore habitats and reduce flood risk and also support strong uh, labor. It has also strong labor provisions in it, which will support more than 84,000 fam uh, family sustaining jobs for New Yorkers. So uh, is there any questions or discussion on, on this? Okay, why don't we uh, take a roll call vote? Uh, Deborah? Yes. Randy? Yes. Greg? Yes. Henry? 
Yes. Great. And I'm a yes. So that passes unanimous. So thank you. And um, part of what, when this was uh, brought to me, what, what um, one of the requests was if this could be distributed and kind of uh, broadcast out to the community to um, let people know in the community about this so, so that we can help support this going forward. So if uh, that's something I, you know, hope that people can do. And I will uh, send that to the, uh, our case board and, and EMC to see if they're interested in, in letting people know about that. All right, uh, one last resolution. Let me get the packet page. 25. Packet page 25. We have a resolution establishing a task force to review the existing relationship between Tompkins County and the Ithaca Area Economic Development Agency. Would someone like to put this on the floor? Deborah, seconded by Greg. And uh, every uh, time that our uh, agreement is up for um, renewal, our contract with IAED, we have to, uh, to uh, start a task force so to look at that on the county side. And so this is what this task force is going to be set up to do. And uh, let's see, and yeah, it says in here the last sentence. So we're gonna, um, the goal is to get back, uh, report back to this committee at the latest by March 30th. So it's gonna be a quick turnaround, Deborah. Yeah, I, I'd like to offer an amendment to this. Um, mm -hmm. When um, Shauna asked me to put this together, we had, um, I guess I should explain a bit about the composition of this group. The legislators involved are the chairs of GO, BCP, um, Health and Human Services, and PDUC, because those are all the committees that um, have some interaction with program areas that IAED touches. Um, the staff is all fairly self-explanatory. Um, however, uh, I think Shauna was trying to give Lisa a break and appoint uh, Bridget to this uh, committee, but um, I am given to understand that Lisa would like to be involved. So I would offer an amendment that would substitute our county administrator, Lisa Holmes, for Deputy County Administrator Bridget Nugent on line 19. Okay. And is that friendly with the seconder? Okay. Thank you. Anything else? So Deborah, thank you for writing this up. And is there anything else you wanted to say about this? And because I know you did a little bit of the research to help bring this forward. No, just that, you know, we're going to be under some time pressure to get this done. Um, and it is, as I understand it, the plan that we will be interviewing people outside of the county who um, who work with IAED in various capacities uh, to get their input. Within and, the county, you mean, or you no, said outside? Outs outside the county, uh, outside county government. Oh, outside, outside county, county government. Okay, thank you. Lisa, did you want to say anything else before I open it up to the? Um, no, thank you. Um, and thank you, Deborah, for making that change. And as much as I would love a break, um, I, I am on the um, IAED board and executive committee. So I feel like I should, I should be a part of the task force as well. Thank you. Well, we'll let you butt in. <laughs> okay. And Greg, did I see your hand up? Yeah, I just, I want to make sure too, because you did mention a time crunch. And I know um, there are some people on this that also are chairing special committees that are also under a significant time crunch, you know, like Dan for the recovery fund. Have we checked with everybody that they're, they're good and fully committed to? I believe Shauna did that, yes. Okay, because that would, that would just be my only concern that there's, um, there's a lot of people that have a, a lot else already going on in addition. Oh, we thrive on pressure. You know that. Yeah. What I, what I usually could... builds diamonds, but. 
That's a good point, Greg. I'll double check with uh, Shauna to make sure that everybody was uh, checked and make sure they have the availability in their schedule because we would have the opportunity when this comes before the legislature that, you know, if, if somebody said they didn't have time for it, yeah. so we would still have time to change them out. Randy? Uh, yeah, I'm interested in this by having faith in the people you've uh, appointed to this. Uh, my only comment would be um, that people in Newfield and Enfield don't have any, um, what's the right word, any understanding of, of, the, of what this um, Ithaca area uh, economic development does because there's no presence there for them. There's no cooperation or communication. So I just wanted to share that as one of my concerns. So. I, you know, I appreciate that, Randy, because that, you know, that is symptomatic of a larger issue with this agreement. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Randy, for bringing that up. And that's the type of, you know, that's the type of things we, we want to know, you know, to, to, to improve things if they need to be improved or, you know, more outreach and more representation. And so that's the type of thing we'll be, you know, looking at and asking, you know, I I'm, I'm made a note to make sure we'll talk to you more about that. Anything else? Okay, why don't we uh, take a vote on this? We'll go the opposite way this time. Uh, Greg? Yes. Randy? Yes. Henry? Yes. And Deborah? Yes. And I'm a yes, so that passes unanimously. And now, uh, was there anything that uh, committee members uh, had any reports from anything? Um, I know you're going to the food systems plan. Was... Go ahead. You... No, no, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Well, you want to you want to give an update or tell, talk about what's going to be happening next no, week? I'm not sure all that's happening, but the food policy council or is tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow at five at Stewart Park. I think uh, Ann and I are actually going to be um, saying a few things. Right. Um, but I think 80 to 90 people have signed up so far to come. And the goal is to kind of put a plan together and, and get people's thoughts on what the next steps are. So. Yeah. So thank you for being our liaison to them. And yeah. Yeah. So that'll be at the farmer's market at five o'clock. Uh, if people are interested and they're going to be giving an update. I think it's in Stewart Park, isn't it? Oh, did I say farmer's market? You're right. Stewart Park. Yeah, farmers markets is where they had some of their their uh, events before. But right, Stewart Park Large Pavilion. Okay. Anything else from our members? It's a record short meeting, Andy. Ooh. Very crisp. Okay. Anything else from our clerks? Okay, and you might have noticed our, our new cat. We haven't figured out a name yet, but I wanted to do a shout out from the Office for the Aging for delivering us our, our new cat. I'm not sure if it's permanent or on loan, but we're very happy to have it here uh, in the legislature. So thank you. Show everybody what it can do, Annie. I mean... So close to keeping it crisp up. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do that offline. We'll do that offline. So... Uh, so uh, would someone like to move to adjourn? Unanimous to adjourn. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And a nice crisp meeting. We'll see you all next month. And actually tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we are, we are gonna have to be crisp tonight because we have some budget issues.